was obvious to everyone that something was wrong at Citizens Bank Park last night. All around, things weren't going as planned to start the lengthy homestands. Those at Dodger Blue, along with others, arrived for the Memorial Day weekend with plans of their own on the offense and pitching side of the game. One day doesn't make a homestand, but finding their way out of last night's struggle would be a good first step in the right direction. Here we are deep in the heart of Memorial Day weekend. We hope everybody's enjoying themselves and they remember those who have served and those who have lost their lives over the years. We get a chance to settle in a little bit here at Citizens Bank Park and enjoy the fair and hopefully enjoy a good ball game between the Phils and the Los Angeles Dodgers and the major league debut of right-hander David Buchanan, who's heading out to the bullpen to begin his warm-up tosses as the Phillies take on the Dodgers at game two of a three-game series. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with Matt Stairs. We were introduced to David Buchanan during spring training, and one thing that really stood out was that David was ready to compete for a big league job. Yeah, and from the first day when he was in spring training, really impressed with his composure on the mound. He took the mound with a lot of confidence. He never got rattled a whole lot. And the thing about him is he has four different pitches. He has a very good curveball, a hard slider, good fastball, and a nice cutter. And the thing with him is that he's, he's not a guy who's going to overpower guys. As you can see in his record, 35 and 27 in his career in the minor leagues with a 3.98 ERA. He's a guy that pitches to contact. He has to be down in the zone, but he can get away with that fastball up in the zone at times because the guys are going to be looking for the changeup, the big curveball, the hard cutter. And he just tries to keep the hitters off balance all the time. Well, and you look at his numbers from spring training. He appeared in five games. He started four, including this one against a very good Toronto Blue Jays team. There were a lot of Toronto Blue Jays players that were in the lineup that afternoon because it's so close to Dunedin. So he'll get a chance to take care of the Los Angeles Dodgers here this afternoon. Now, one thing the Phillies need to do is they, they need to convert today, and they need to play a little better baseball than they did last night. Yeah, a very tough night last night, especially with the bases loaded in the seventh inning. And we had a situation, you know, all of a sudden, Dee Brown comes out facing uh, J.P. Howell, takes a, a very nice, easy swing, drives the ball here to left field. Now, the rule of thumb, what we're taught at third base, is any ball that's hit in the air automatically go back and tag. This situation here, Ben took a, a too big of a secondary lead, didn't get a chance to go back and tag, which to me was the turning point. Now it puts the pressure on Jimmy to try to get a, a, a base hit here. It's a ground ball to Figgins. Now with two outs, all the pressure is on Chooch. Now he has to come through it, and it was tough. But to me, it comes back to that first play, different situation if all of a sudden we can score on that sack fly. Never know what happens. Because you're into the Dodger bullpen at, at that point. The Phillies were 0 for 9 last night with runners in scoring position. And Matt, uh, runners in scoring position has been an issue for them in recent games. Yeah, especially with the second and third. And all of a sudden, Kershaw uh, he didn't have his greatest stuff last night. He didn't control his curveball a whole lot last night. But it seemed like when he needed to make the pitches, he did. But the problem is our hitters didn't make the adjustments as well and get him up in the zone. All right, nine strikeouts for Kershaw last night. Today, it's Dan Heron who will take the baseball for the Dodgers. It's game two of this three-game series. Heron making his 10th start of the season in the big leagues. For Buchanan, it's his first major league start, but it's his 10th overall start here in 2014. Well, what a night D. Gordon had last night on the base pass. Three stolen bases. He has 28 on the year. He's back in the lineup, which we'll get to when we return to Citizens Bank Park. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Toyota. The Toyota Time Sales event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. By Citizens Bank, introducing one deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. By Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. By Budweiser, here's to Budweiser, here's to baseball. And by Independence Blue Cross, the most preferred health plan in the region. Independence Blue Cross, live fearless.
little day baseball between the Phils and the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Dodgers, of course, took game one by a final of two to nothing. And today, David Buchanan makes his major league debut for the Philadelphia Phillies. He's out warming up, jitters and all, I'm sure. After beginning the year at AAA Lehigh Valley, let's take a look at the Dodgers lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Now, they've made some changes to their lineup, leading it off at second base, D. Gordon. Justin Turner bats second. He's at third base. Yasiel Puig hits third. Adrian Gonzalez is the cleanup hitter. Carl Crawford's in left. Andre Ethier, the center fielder, bats sixth. A.J. Ellis will bat seventh. Ariz Bell Arabanea will be at shortstop once again. He'll bat eighth. And batting ninth and pitching is right-hander Dan Herron. And, of course, they will face the 25-year-old right-hander from Peachtree City, Georgia. Five and one down at AAA. He had one rough outing. That was his last time out. He only pitched one inning for the Iron Pigs. Yeah, he was up in the zone that outing. But what we saw in spring training is a control pitcher. He'll top out about 92 miles an hour. Has a very good cutter. Nice change up and a big curveball. But he's a sinker ball pitcher and he pitches to, with the control. And you see our Budweiser scouting report. Folks have compared him to Kyle Kendrick. So he's ready to go. And he'll face D. Gordon to start things off. Now, the first inning has been an issue for David Buchanan uh, down in the minor leagues this year. Nine starts. An 11 earned run average. And the first pitch is taken inside, so he can check it off. He's made his major league debut for the Phils, and it's one ball and no strikes. D. Gordon last night was pain in the neck when he got on base. He got on base twice. Check swing, slowly hit. This is going to be a tough play. Rollins hurries. Oh, what a release by Jimmy Rollins. One away. He had to do everything quickly to make that play. Yeah, he did. And the advantage that we had was it was a, a check swing, so he couldn't get out of the batter's box as quick as usual. But Jimmy's been playing tremendous defense the whole year. Perfect timing. Got out there, and actually, that kind of helped that he hit off the, the palm of his glove to get the ball of his glove foot. So, what a way. Here's Justin Turner. Turner was originally scheduled to bat seventh this afternoon. Yasiel Puig was originally in the two hole, and then Hanley Ramirez third. But Ramirez, about 20 minutes ago, came up with a sore calf that has been bothering him recently. So they had to make a very late lineup adjustment. Turner did not play in yesterday's ball game. One ball and one strike. Off the end of the bat, out of play. David's uh, father Andy is the gentleman in the red striped shirt. Look at back is that foul ball. That went back uh, behind him. There is a ton of folks from the Buchanan family from Peachtree City Georgia that are here to watch his debut. Balls hit hard toward third. Cesar Hernandez is there. there are two outs. Peachtree City is about 34 minutes or 35 minutes I should say from Atlanta. And David was originally selected in the sixth round by the New York Mets uh, before he went to Georgia State. Uh, the Phillies selected him out of Georgia State in the seventh round in 2010. He is the first player from Georgia State to make it to the major leagues. There have been eight players selected, including Buchanan. He's the first one. Pretty impressive. And now Yasiel Puig, three for three last night. Puig reached base on two infield hits, although one, he was fortunate that the umpires did not see that the ball actually hit his spike. He went running out of the batter's box. And they allowed it to be an infield hit. He grounds that one softly to short. Rollins is there, and what a debut for David Buchanan. So much for first inning issues. Three ground ball outs. He retires the Dodgers in order, and he does so with just eight pitches. We'll go to the bottom of the first. It's the Dodgers nothing and the Phillies coming up.
inning. It's the Dodgers nothing. The Phillies coming up. Let's take a look at the Phillies starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. It'll be Revere back in the leadoff spot. Then Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley. Ryan Howard bats cleanup. Marlon Bird hits fifth. Dominic Brown sixth. In the bottom third of Ruiz, Hernandez, and David Buchanan. And they will face veteran right-hander Dan Heron. Heron five and two so far in nine starts with an ERA of 3.18. And... I think everybody knows the book on Dan Heron, Matt. They know what he offers. He doesn't throw as hard as he used to, but he still is able to compete. Well, and he used to be a guy who was getting a lot of fly ball outs, and now he's actually turned into be a, a ground ball pitcher. He's getting a lot of ground balls, which means he has a very good sinker, keeping guys off balance with a nice cutter, and he still has that very good split. And as you can see, versus his, uh, the Phillies in his career, he's 1-4 and four with a 4 6 seven ERA. So they've had good success. With him, you just have to make sure the ball is up in the zone. That is our Budweiser scouting report. Ben Revere will lead it off. Revere one for two last night. He came out as a pinch hitter, got a base hit, wound up at third. And then the problems occurred. Jimmy Rollins, who's been the leadoff hitter for uh, the last week, is back in the two hole. We'll talk about Ryan Sandberg's reasonings on that in just a bit. Ball is grounded over the first base bag down the right field line. Revere on his way to second, nearly touched by a fan as Puig slides and picks it up. A leadoff double for Ben Revere, and ladies and gentlemen, it's his first double of the year. Boy, it took a long time for him to pick up that first two base hit. Pacing himself. <laughs> Tom, he just paced himself. No, it has it's been a long time. And you would think with the speed that he would uh, get some more doubles, but this looks like it's a, an off-speed pitch down in the zone, and Adrian Gonzalez wasn't expecting him to pull the ball, and it's just a matter of inches of being a fair ball for his first double of the year. Ryan Sandberg said the reason he's put him up in the leadoff spot, back in the leadoff spot, is that, listen, we got to get him going. If he's going to play, he needs to hit, and my feeling is, is that he'll get pitches to hit as the leadoff hitter, and maybe that'll spark the same run he had last season. Rollins bunts in the air and Ellis makes the catch. And Rollins obviously frustrated with himself that he was trying to get the runner over to third and was unable to do that. And there's one away. Well, the Phillies have certainly struggled here at home, Murph, and uh, it's surprising to see what they've done here at Citizens Bank Park. You're right, Tom. You know, it's interesting when you look at what the Phils have done and what the Dodgers have done. You know, Phillies won three out of four when they were out in L.A. earlier this season. The Dodgers, of course, took game one here at Citizens Bank Park. Take a look. Eight and 13 at home are the Phils. The batting average at just a 235, scoring three and a half runs per game on the road, four and a half runs per game. You see the record is at 500. But take a look at the Dodgers. Very similar. Back at home, just 9 and 13 with a uh, run uh, scoring of 3.8 per game, but on the road, 4.7. They're 17 and 10 away from Los Angeles. I would imagine it's a trend that both teams are hoping will change uh, as the season goes on. You need to start winning at home if you're going to win a division for both these clubs. But uh, right now, it's been much sweeter on the road for both the Dodgers and the Phillies. You would think, law of averages, that both of these teams will start winning in their respective uh, ballparks. Particularly, you know, the Phillies have had such great success here at Citizens Bank Park. And Don Mattingly's team last year struggled somewhat at home, but not like they are this year. Utley pops it up. Ellis again, this time toward the Phillies dugout. And he can't hang on. And a break for the Phillies. He got a sense that he felt the railing as he was getting closer to it. Yeah, he just thought he was kind of coasting, coasting a little bit and just off the end of the glove. And like you said, hopefully that uh, Chase can take advantage of the break right here and come through with a, a big knock right here. Now they're going to score that an error uh, to the catcher. So that's his second error of the season. So one ball and one strike to Chase Utley. With Revere still at second. Again, this was a problem in last night's ball game for the Phillies, getting the runner over to third with less than two outs and then getting him in. Yeah. That one's hit well. Deep to right field. We going back toward the scoreboard. It is gone! A two-run home run for Chase Utley. It's not a problem today. And the Phillies have taken a 2-0 lead.
Larry Boa, last time we talked to him, said that they're waiting for that big hit to break it open a little bit. Well, maybe this is the defensive play that breaks it open with the air and chase it in the under right field. Well, that's the first home run of the month of May for Chase Utley, and it makes a winner out of Barbara Orr of Folsom, PA. She's just won $200 in our McDonald's home run jackpots. Fourth home run overall for Utley. Now the door was left wide open by A.J. Ellis on the drop pop-up in foul territory, and Utley, he got a cutter, and he turned on it quickly. One ball and one strike to Ryan Howard. Chase now with a couple of extra base hits in this two game series. It's been more than a month since Chase Utley hit a home run. That ball is pulled deep down the right field line. Hooking foul. There's the door opener. And now there's the door closed right there at the cutter inside and drive into right field. Well, he's got a nice short swing. It, you know, and I'm not worried about Chase's home runs because he's a line drive hitter and he makes he hits mistakes out of the ballpark. And if he's going to continue to to hit for a high average and get a lot of doubles, which is fine and run into a home run once in a while. Um, but he, he is a line drive hitter and occasional he has good pop. But sometimes he just doesn't get the backspin on it. Yeah, Chase has 20 doubles this yeah. year and three triples. Howard lays off three and two. Ground ball foul on Samuel. Back in the first base coach's box. What did he say to us today? <laughs> I'm going to try to stay in the ball game today. <laughs> Sammy was ejected from last night's ball game. With the Phillies up at the plate. Swing and a miss. Howard is struck out. Fourth strikeout for Ryan Howard in this series. And there are two outs. And that'll bring Marlon Hurd to the plate. Sammy was ejected from last night's ball game with the Phillies up at the plate. But it was what happened earlier in the game on this foul ball off the foot of Yasiel Puig. Puig ran it out, and the umpires didn't see that it hit his foot. And Sammy kind of carried the conversation over to his uh, first base coach's box. He said he kind of said a few too many things. <laughs> yeah, it was after an attempt with the uh, with the push bunt by right. Hernandez and. Words that we cannot say on TV. <laughs> uh, got him an early shower. He was in that same spot that he is right now, and he said he was carrying on the conversation with the home plate umpire at this point, Seth Buckminster. And he just added to it as the inning went on. The ball is pulled foul. One ball and one strike. Buckminster is behind the plate. And the crew chief fielding Colbreth is at second base. Brian Knight at first and Manny Gonzalez at third. One ball, one strike to Bird. Marlon was 0 for 4 in yesterday's ball game. Adrian Gonzalez will give this a look, but it's going to be back a few rows. And it remains two balls and two strikes. I really found last night that Marlon Bird was really jumpy when he was hitting. And, and what I mean by jumpy is he's trying to do too much, trying to, to put the whole team on his back and, and try to get that big hit. And really, the second of bat didn't make the adjustment with the second and third. And struck out with uh, three consecutive pitches in the exact same spot. We had a lot of fun watching Marlon's reactions in Miami every time he would strike out or not get the hit when he thought he should have it. Uh, he's an extremely competitive guy. 
He's always been that way from his days of being a football player. And he was frustrated after the game last night. 2-2 two -two pitch to Bird. Fouls back. It remains 2-2. Two and two. Enough, and if it did, it probably would have, you know, probably would have whacked pretty far. For a pitcher, it's called a good hanger because it didn't come back over the plate enough, and all you could do is just hit it uh, foul. But Dan's been up in the zone quite a bit today. That one spun out toward left center. It's going to be in for a base hit. Ethier plays deep, cuts it off at the track. His throw to second, not in time. A double for Bird. It's his 16th of the year, and it comes on the ninth pitch of the at bat. Well, it's time now to take a look at our keys to the game. Did you have Chase Utley home run in there, Matt? No, but I think I might change it. But no, I, I, I think it, it, you can relax and trust what you got here in the big leagues. Don't try to do too much. And to me, the, the, the biggest one is play smarter baseball, run on the bases, have better bats. And so far, this they've uh, they've had some quality at bats. Yeah, the Rollins bunt aside, but he understood what he was trying to do. He was trying to get the runner over to third. Dominic Brown takes a strike. It's 0 1. Dominic was 0 for 1 last night. He had that line drive to left as a pinch hitter. Overall, hitting 210, three home runs, 22 runs batted in. And it's 0 and 2. Dominic does have a home run against Heron. He's four for 12 lifetime against him. Into the Hall of Fame club. Decent numbers for Dominic with runners in scoring position. We mentioned that he's fifth in the National League in RBIs for left fielders. And it's partly because of what he's done with runners in scoring position, hitting over 300. Stays alive. His hand slipped right off the bat on that one, didn't it? It looked like it was almost like a swing. No, I don't want to swing. I got to protect the zone. But the thing about him early in the season, he was getting all those RBIs. Is that he was a nice, doing a nice job of, of not trying to do too much, and he was hitting a lot of balls uh, to the hole and shortstop, and taking what he was throwing, giving. Kind of like he was trying to do there on that outside pitch. Right, and I understand he's got power, and, and you get frustrated at times, and you, know, you want to try to hit the home run, and, and, and but it's just a matter of pitch selection, and that's what he needs to get back to doing is go ahead and look for that one pitch once in a while to turn on, but if it continues throwing fastballs away, now all of a sudden just go back to left field and, and do what you really did early in the season. The one-two pitch, he pulls that one foul past Samwell. what you were talking about with Dominic Brown Matt he's had a couple of pitches which he you can see he's tried to serve it to left but these last two have been in so he's recognizing that and he's fouled a bunch off but he's turned on and, and which uh, hopefully now he understands that how quick his hands are 
with fastballs inside. Those balls that he's just hit foul, they're not strikes. And it realizes how quick it is and just a reaction. Well, that, <laughs> that's, that's going to be a problem. That's I mean, impressive. That ball, <laughs> that ball <laughs> went toward the split in the seats off the right field line. It bounced onto the concourse. Again, one ball and two strikes. Just a little low, two and two. Those will take that. Heron's been shaking his head a lot. That he was shaking his head at the, the home plate umpire because it looked like a pretty good pitch. Out toward left, it's not deep. Long run for Crawford. And he gets to the spot, makes the catch in the side, is retired. So an 11 pitch at bat for Dominic Brown. Marlon Bird had a nine pitch at bat. Meanwhile, Jay Sutley got an extra pitch because of an error by A.J. Ellis, and he didn't waste it. He lines a two run home run to right, and the Phillies take the early lead. Dodgers at 135, Ryan Sandberg, Louisville Slugger, Plastic Bat, compliments of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 98 to fans 14 and under. You can order tickets for that game right now by going to phillies.com or feel free to stop by the box office. David Buchanan begins the second with a 2 0 lead. His first pitch to Adrian Gonzalez misses low, one ball and no strikes. Chase Utley's home run, his first of May, has given David that lead. Off speed pitch one and one. Adrian 0 for 5 in last night's ball game. Hit him to a double play. Mario Hollins came in to get him to do that. Off the hands to the right side. So four ground outs right now for David Buchanan. Well, people have compared him to to Kyle Kendrick and Kyle is a sinker ball pitcher who likes to get ground balls uh, and David Buchanan again gets four ground ball outs to start his uh, debut right and I think they're compared because of the, the way they pitch and, uh, and uh, he, you can throw it a little harder than uh, Kendrick but you see right there was it was a cutter inside but you know, they both featured cutters sinkers uh, but I really haven't been stuck on Kendrick's sinker yet it's more of a Called a, a, a little mover or it just kind of tails a little bit. Two balls and no strikes to Carl Crawford. Crawford, who was two for four in yesterday's game with a home run. A liner to left, right at Dominic Brown. Two outs. 
during the 2014 season Turkey Hill the official ice cream of the Phillies will contribute one hundred dollars for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Graham Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. Doesn't matter what the weather is it's always a good time for some Turkey Hill ice cream. Here's Andre Ethier. Pretty good night last night. He was two for three. Story on David Buchanan is that during the offseason, you know, the Phillies have a, a rookie symposium where they bring some of the uh, the younger prospects to Philadelphia to kind of learn some things, handling the media, what to expect when they make it to the big league, stuff like that. It's a great program. And Buchanan was invited this year, and it's at that point that the Phillies decided to invite him to spring training as a non roster player. Remarkable what he was able to accomplish. He nearly picked that one, but Andre Ethier's aboard with the first hit of the day for the Dodgers. People's always, people always talk about first impressions that they could carry a lot of weight. Well, Phillies knew David Buchanan, but they were impressed with the way he handled the the symposium, and it's at that point that they decided to invite him to. Major League Camp and man did he run with that opportunity. <laughs> Probably a lot of people right now saying well I'll go do an interview or I'll go sit in on it. I actually had to do it my oh, first yeah. year in 18 uh, 18 1989 to say the 1800s <laughs> I didn't realize you were that old. <laughs> I feel like it sometimes but we were taught how to go and, and talk to the media what to expect how to turn the questions back on the media that's asked us. How to get away from a question, and it's all by eye contact, <laughs> which was very impressive. Up and in, one ball, one strike to AJ Ellis. Major League Baseball uh, has a rookie symposium uh, that they do every year down in Virginia. I think it's Virginia, it's Virginia or North Carolina, but that goes a long way too. But this one is here in Philadelphia for the Phillies prospects. Out toward right, Marlon Bird. Tracking it down, makes the catch in foul territory, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, and one man left for Buchanan. So he's through two. We'll go to the bottom of the second. He'll get his first major league at bat. Sutley two run home run that's back the major league debut so far of right header David Buchanan who is a very popular fellow at least in Peachtree City Georgia and in the section that Murph's sitting in right now Murph section 121 is having a real good time so far let me introduce you to Andy Buchanan uh, the proud father of David Buchanan and uh, 
Well, so far so good uh, in terms of Major League starts. you got to be pretty excited. Pretty excited. Pretty excited. It's been a long road. Um, we've worked very hard to get here. And uh, just very proud to see him out there. Good day. Can you tell us what it was like when uh, he gave you that phone call and said, uh, Dad, guess where I'm headed? I'm headed to Philadelphia. Well, I actually happened to be in my wife's office at that particular time. And I said, it's David. And she goes, she starts getting jumpy. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you know, grins and tears. And uh, just like, what's next? Trying to find a flight up here. Uh, David's mom is right here, uh, Stacy, uh, right behind. And uh, let me let me just ask you, uh, you know, we all like to give our kids some advice. Uh, what kind of advice does mom give uh, her son as he's about to make his major league debut? Keep the faith. Really, I mean, he's fought the fight and he's kept the faith, and now I feel like he's uh, experiencing the reward. Quite frankly, he really is. I mean, he just. Well, he started pitching Andy what when he was three years old, and he's just for 22 years he was he wanted to be here today, and and he is. Is it hard to believe that he is here today? It is surreal, it is. But but we knew it was coming. We just didn't know when. You know, we knew it was coming. You know, and that's the most important thing, Andy. When you when you think about it, is believing that uh, that this moment is going to come. I'm sure David has always believed that this moment would come, and I, I would imagine you guys did as well. Oh, absolutely. He has never given up. Uh, even when he got some bad news about maybe not getting a certain call, uh, the man asked another guy asked him, "So you want to go work out?" I said, "Yep, let's go work out." And he's just never quit. He's kept his eye on the long-term goal. All right. Now, more importantly, he's on deck now. What kind of hitter is he? We're fixing to find out, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> we are fixing to find out, indeed. Congratulations to all of you. A great group here. The, the whole family is here, and uh, they're, they're celebrating what is a really special day for the Buchanan family. Uh, thanks for your time, guys. We'll send it back upstairs. All right, Murph, thank you very much. Yes, we are fixing to find out what kind of hitter he is. But first, Cesar Hernandez is at the plate. Hernandez 0 for 3 last night, playing third base again for Cody Ashey, who's battling a sore hamstring. We noticed that in the game against the Marlins, game two against the Marlins. They appeal, no swing, says Manny Gonzalez. One and one to Cesar. Matt, I, we should use that more. We're fixing to find out. <laughs> well, I think when you hear it to say they're fixing to find out, it means he's not a very good hitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a battle. Play. It's one and two to Hernandez. Hitting uh, 182. He has four hits and 22 at bats. Brad Sandberg wasn't sure uh, if Cody Ashey will play tomorrow or not. They're hopeful that he is, but he is available to pinch hit here tonight. Or today, I should say. Two and two. Here's to Budweiser. Here's to baseball. Two balls, two strikes. Please have put together some long at bats against Dan Heron. It's done a couple things. It's raised his pitch count. Here in the second with nobody out there 43 pitches. As a hitter does that tell you anything when you're fouling off so many or your teammates are fouling off so many. Well I think what it, what's the most important thing is, is that you need to get him early because he's up in the zone. Uh, it just shows that he, he doesn't have that real good bite on his foot finger or his slider. Uh, he's getting under everything and. You, you want to try and, and just why by watching his motions on the mound he's, he's kind of walking around frustrated knowing that he can't get down in the zone and this is where he needs to jump on because he can lock it in real quick and it was nice to see that they scored two runs in the first inning on the on the home run by Chase. Carlos uh, not a big lead over at first. Ruiz goes the pitch is high ball four and the Phillies have runners on first and second with nobody out. 
Well, we may not fix to find out what kind of a hitter he is. We might be fixing to find out what kind of a bunter David Buchanan is as he walks to the plate. Pitcher David Buchanan. David three for 31 down in the minor leagues as a hitter. Five sacrifice bunts, none this year. He's only one for four this year. Look where Adrian Gonzalez is standing, Matt. He's literally, well, now he's backing up, but he was closer than I've ever seen a first baseman. He bunts at it, misses. Ruiz is caught off second, and he is out at second base. 6 on the put out on the pickoff. Ryan Sandberg, you're wondering what the heck is going on with the base runners. Chich has got a too big of a secondary lead and kind of stabbed at it. And another bad uh, spot in the game with base runners. The bunt goes toward third. Turner's play is to first, so he gets a sacrifice. That's a good job. And the put out goes 5 4. So one out runner at second base. Ron Sandberg even talked to today about the fundamentals of the base running and talked about how much they've worked on it and they have. And you know, Carlos obviously knows better than that. And he just got caught off the second base bag. But it's just a huge play. And you have nobody out, runners on first and second. Now you have one out because of the sacrifice or two outs because of the sacrifice and a runner at second. Well, and as a, as a runner at second base, you want to get a good secondary lead, but it's mandatory that the, 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 the pitcher, whoever it is, has to lay down the bunt to make your job easy to get to third base. You know, and I understand he wants to get that good secondary lead, but uh, you, you got to wait and do that crossover or get that bigger secondary lead once the ball is put down on the uh, put in play. One and one to Revere. And Revere lines one back into center field, a base hit around third, heading for home is Hernandez. Here's the throw by Ethier, not in time. An RBI single by Ben Revere. He's two for two, and it's three nothing Phillies. Sandberg had a gut feeling that he wanted to get Revere going and he felt like putting him in the leadoff spot today he could try to get him going and he goes after a high pitch here. Yeah just a slider really that backed up stayed up in the zone and Ben did a nice job of driving the ball up the center field and scoring Hernandez but I really like the, the, the fact that Ben goes to second base on the throw and anticipating hopefully Gonzalez will cut it and take the other second base for a run. And if he doesn't cut it then he's where he is right now. position. So David Buchanan has a three run lead. It was his sacrifice bunt that led to this third run. Jimmy Rollins popped up on a bunt his first time up. One ball and one strike to Rollins. His bat and it's one and two. So after Ruiz is picked off, the Phillies play some good baseball by getting the bunt down of your Buchanan and then Revere not trying to do too much, just lining the single to center field. Balls at two strikes. Fair ball. Oh, 
looked like a knuckler that was going out there down the right field line. Sat, kind of see it spinning as it was going out there. Two balls, two strikes. And a line drive, base hit it to right center field. Another run will score. Revere coasts home from second. And the Phillies tack on one more. It's 4 nothing. Well, not only has Ben Revere have two hits and an RBI, but he's now scored his second run of the afternoon. And this is one thing we've seen all year with Jimmy going deep in the count and just getting a good hitter's count. Battles getting a couple pitches, fouls him off, gets the ball out over the plate, drives to the right field for a base hit, scores Ben very easily. And what I like about the last two hits, they've both come with the two out. Two out rally after a mistake on Ruiz running the base paths. They could have rolled over, but now all of a sudden they have back to back very good at bats. Five hits for the Phillies in two innings. Here's Utley. Utley hits one off the end of the bat, out towards shallow right center. Gordon. Will make the catch of the side is retired. But the Phillies score a couple in the inning. A couple walks, couple hits. David Buchanan a sack butt. We'll go to the third. It's 4 0. Phillies on top. Com. Go to the fans section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, Matt, the question is which two Dodgers won MVP awards in the 77 and 78 National League Championship Series against the Phillies? Answer will be re revealed in just a little bit as we get set for the top of the third. Phillies are up 4 0. And Mike Ando, Phillies uh, director of pro scouting, joins us up here in the booth. First pitch is chopped toward third. Hernandez makes the play. One out. All right, Mike, I, I guess the first question you've seen David Buchanan down in Lehigh Valley. Uh, what did you think earlier this year, and what do you think so far? Oh, we've seen David uh, the last few years in three minor leagues, and uh, I think everybody's been always been impressed with his, his poise, his ability to throw four pitches for strikes. And, and I think. Uh, with the the way he sees an opportunity in uh, in um, big league camp this year, I think uh, he's holding up just as everyone would hope and, and expected him to today. I know he probably had nerves coming into this ball game, but he, I guess the one two three first may have settled that down a little bit, and uh, he's getting ground balls. I mean that's a big thing for him. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Get this, get the ground balls, and and uh, uh, with, with the, the infield, you know, the veterans we have around the infield that helps. Uh, well, there's another one as Rollins will throw out Heron, who helped his cause by not really hustling up the line. Mike, uh, first of all, can you help me with the trivia question? Do you know the answer by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, you know, we talk about Kenny Giles, and, and we saw him in spring training. His, his great fastball, starting in double A, the jump to triple A. What have you seen so far, and what do we expect in, in the near future? 
I, you know, Kenny's a special arm. I think everyone knows that. Uh, and, and he got off to a great start in Reading this year, uh, dominating the league, really. And, uh, you know, he's moved on to AAA, and, and I think he's, I think it's six innings now he has under his belt, and he continues to work on his command and, and, and his secondary pitches, and, and he's, doing, he's doing the things he needs to do uh, that, that, that the uh, development staff's talked to him about working on. He continues to develop that, and, and uh, hopefully, you know, it, as it improves, we'll... You know, time will tell and when, when we'll see him here in Philadelphia. D. Gordon's the batter. The count no balls and one strike to D. Gordon. Two outs here in the third. Mike uh, has come through the organization. He went to the University of Scranton where he was a catcher. Uh, grew up in this area. And Chris Cashman right now is doing the gun. Now that's a throwback to your days. You, you <laughs> used to do what Chris Cashman is doing. Yeah, yes I did. Uh, about five years down there. Most of them at the vet. Four of them at the vet and one over here. But the, I'll be honest with you, that was, for me, not having played professionally, coming in here working, uh, especially in the baseball department, those those games you spend down there behind home plate at, at that close, that perspective on every pitch, I mean, it, it helps you. It really, um, it really uh, enlightens you on how, on how hard the game is and, and, and what what major league players look look like and what their um, and what their what the stuff looks like. So that that was that was a that was. I look back at that as a as a point in my career that that really helped me out. And there's a call, strike three. It's a one-two-three inning for David Buchanan. He looked pretty sharp. Mike, we're going to keep you for another half inning. That's the first time uh, we've seen him pick up a strikeout here this afternoon, and it was a beautiful pitch. He throws the two-seamer right off the hip of D. Gordon. We'll go to the bottom of the third here at Philly. Brought to you by the Pennsylvania Lottery. Benefits older Pennsylvanians every day. By Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW for an appointment. And by Dodge. Visit Dodge.com for your local dealer today. A little bark in the park here at Citizens Bank Park as we go to the bottom of the third. Some of the pups out in Ashburn Alley enjoying a cool day with their owners. And they're watching the Phils jump out to a 4-0 lead as we go to the bottom of the third. Ryan Howard will lead it off. Mike Ando, who is the director of pro scouting for the Phillies, is uh, still with us up here in the booth as we go to the bottom of the third. And Ryan Howard waves and misses the first pitch. It's no balls and one strike. Mike, we, we put your resume up before. Uh, you talked about being behind home plate like Chris Cashman is right now. Could you have ever have envisioned as a college player that you would be able to do something like this, have baseball as part of your life in a front office? No, I mean, well, I had hoped so. I, I wanted to do something in sports, and I, and I joke with people now that I think my first my first foray into scouting was realizing that uh, I needed to study so I could get a job when I got out of school. <laughs> but uh, um, no, I mean, this is this has been I don't want to say a dream come true. I mean, it's something that to, to be able to work in, uh, in in a game that you've always loved to play and, and be around. Um, it's something that. No, I feel lucky to lucky to have this opportunity, and 
and, and I'm really enjoying it. Now, part of your responsibility is also preparing the organization for the Rule 5 draft. Now, that's got to be something uh, that, that, that needs a lot of study, a lot of research, a lot of, you know, phone calls and conversations with people. Yeah, the Rule 5 is, is it actually, for me, it's one of the more enjoyable times. I enjoy the Rule 5 draft. Uh, you, know, you start going through those players, and I think our staff does a good job of identifying these guys. Um, and, and, and to me, the Rule 5 is just we're doing a good job in your coverage because a lot of the players that you start, to, you start talking about in the Rule 5 draft aren't necessarily, weren't necessarily the high draft picks. They're not necessarily all the, guy, the guys getting all the hype you know, that, that, that everybody knows about. And I think uh, you need to identify players who, obviously, if you're going to take one, they're gonna, they, they have to be able to help your major league team right away. So with the, with the guys for Rule 5, will you guys go out and watch them for quite a period of time, or are you going off what other people say? I mean, I know you want to have the, the bird's eye view on, on players, but uh, I would think that it's, it's a very big decision. You're going to watch a guy for, for what, a, maybe a month or more? Or Well, the, the thing with the Rule 5 is you don't necessarily know who, I mean, you have an idea who could be eligible during the year, but you really don't know until the reserve, the reserve lists are set. So at that point, you know, some of the players that you think are available, teams will add to their 40-man rosters. So you really, you really have to go, I think you really have to do a good job going off your reports from the year and your coverage. And then, you know, you do have an opportunity to maybe pick up a guy in the fall league or, or, or in, in some cases get a guy down, playing down in a winter league someplace where you can get a, a, a look at him, um, you know, right there before the draft as well. But for the most part, a lot of that work needs to be done through your coverage during the year. Two strikeouts for Dan Heron. He got Ryan Howard. Now he gets Marlon Byrd. All right, the other part of your job is part of advanced scouting. How important is that, and how has that evolved over the years, do you think? Well, from the time I started here, we went, you know, we've gone from the advanced, you know, we still have an advanced scout out there. I know there's some teams that don't. Uh, we, we, we talked about it. We thought, we, as an organization, we thought it was important to have a guy in the stands ahead of, ahead of our team to, to, to look for different things uh, from, the, from your upcoming opponent. Um, but, you know, a lot of other stuff goes into that. I mean, it's work that gets done by the coaches and the, even the players on the video side of things. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, you know, between spray charts and things like that, things you can get off various sites on the Internet. I mean, the, you know, it, it's involved, I think, to the point where you're doing some things off with percentages and, and swing counts and things like that now. So uh, that, along with the, the information that comes in from the scout, from what he's seen, I think all that gets put into play and as far as coming up with your game plan. Well, Michael, your first go around on television is complete. <laughs> How did it feel? Was it, was it good? It was pretty good. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks we appreciate it. On, all right. All Mike right, Nando, Michael. the thanks director of pro scouting for the Phillies, joining us up here in the booth. The Phillies on top 4 nothing. We'll go to the top of the fourth here at Citizens Bank Park when we return. Mountain Coffee K-Cup Packs keeps, your, keeps you running and provides fan base satisfaction. Order by 1130 and get free same-day delivery. Who but? 
W.B. Mason. Go to the top of the fourth inning. Phillies lead it four nothing. Second go around for the Dodgers against David Buchanan. It'll be Justin Turner, Yasiel Puig, and Adrian Gonzalez. That's one ball and no strikes. Turner grounded out sharply to third, his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Out towards center field. Revere going back, and it's over his head. A one hop off the wall. And Turner's on his way to second. He'll be there standing with a leadoff double. First extra base hit for the Dodgers today. And that'll bring Yasiel Puig to the plate. And it's time to take a look at our Geico quote of the day. And it was on his style of play. I try to play the game hard and I try to play the game happy. I want to have a good time when I'm playing. This is a game of entertainment. I don't play to offend people, but I do have a good time playing the game of baseball. Well, that in a very short period of time is very obvious. <laughs> They've had to temper some of his actions, but Don Mattingly kind of said he, he alluded to this when we were out in Los Angeles. He really is what he is. You, know, you can corral him as much as you want, but the real Puig is going to come out as he plays the game. Just off the outside corner, 1 0. Mattingly was a very successful major leaguer. Uh, he didn't have a whole lot of flamboyance to him when he played. That whole coaching staff did. Tim Wallach, Mark McGuire, uh, uh, Valentine, Davey Lopes. Chopper back toward the middle. Rollins is there. He spins, throws, one hop, not in time. A Puig with an infield single. Puts runners on first and third. Well, here's the first jam for David Buchanan. Dodgers now with three hits, two in this inning. Jimmy tried to do all he could right there as a chopper up the middle, top spin, and turns and throws as hard as you can. But the speed up, we just took over, get down the line. And but what I still like about Buchanan is he's getting the ground ball. He just gets out of the box and he just smells the hit. He knows he can beat it. It's amazing. Now he just runs through the bag and. and Knows he's going to beat that ball. For me, I'm just chugging, thinking, I'm like the little engine that could. <laughs> <laughs> Gonzalez takes high, 1 0, so he's fallen behind the last three hitters. And then Tweek, who had three hits last night, and has now reached base safely in 25 straight. Last year, Buchanan was 10 and 13 be, uh, combined between Reading and Lehigh Valley in an ERA of 4.40. Started his AAA career with a 2 and 0 record and a 1.29 ERA. It's almost as if he realized once he got to AAA that he could do it. His numbers were better at AAA last year uh, than they were. In double A. Tried that two seamer, it just missed. Two balls and two strikes to Gonzalez. That's the pitch he got Gordon with in the third. And this is a situation uh, second time through the batting order to see how he makes the adjustments how the hitters going to make the adjustment. It's very hard for hitters when you've never seen a pitcher before uh, the first time. So you don't know how his movement you don't know what his uh, his strengths are and, and what to look off after certain pitches because a lot of pitches will. Uh, like Justin Berlander loves to throw a fastball away. If he throws it for a ball he'll come back with a with a changeup. 
Now there's a two seamer that was supposed to be away and he he pulled back inside so this is where you got to start making the adjustments on hitters and the hitters have to make adjustments on the pitchers. Little tapper in front of the mound. Buchanan looks around. He has plenty of time. He understood it was Gonzalez running. One away, second and third as Quee goes up to second. It's now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. It's brought to you by at &T. Good choice of pitches by Ruiz in that one. Yeah, it really was. And, and I think actually what set it up was kind of the, the, the missed two seamer away that he ended up pulling inside. And it almost looked like Gonzalez was cheating again inside and, and got a pitch to, to hit the dribbler back to the pitcher, to Buchanan. Well, now Crawford with the infield back. And he fouls it into the Phillies dugout 0 and 1. Where Buchanan is from, we mentioned, is 35 miles from Atlanta. He grew up a Braves fan. Peachtree City, Georgia, one of the crazy things about it. It's a beautiful town. But as David will tell you, there are probably more golf carts than there are cars. People in Peachtree City, Georgia, roll around the neighborhoods and the town in golf carts more so than the cars. There's golf cart paths. There's places to park your golf cart at different facilities around the town. Sounds like up in Canada where we have the, all the skidoos, or you say, what, snowmobiles down here? <laughs> we do say snowmobiles. I don't think I've ever heard them called skidoos. Skidoo. I think we called it a skidoo because it was, and why we're talking about skidoos, I don't know why I brought it up, but <laughs> it's, it's, we have trails up home where it's, you can go from, East Coast to Minnesota, if you want. Wow. They have outhouses and they have places you can fill up in gas, and it's. Grounder right side. Ryan Howard is there. Oh, he's got to get to the bag. He slides in time and runs scores. There are two outs. It's a 4 1 ball game. Well, this is a good job by Ryan Howard. To, he was thinking about flipping it, but. Buchanan was slow getting over, and there he is. Big piece ends up running over hard and making a nice dive and play and getting to the Speedy Crawford. Quay goes to third. And now Andre Ethier, who singled his first time up. Crawford gets the RBI. It's his 16th of the year. Off the hands, a looper out toward left. Dominic Brown coming in, makes the catch, and the side is retired. Pretty good job by David Buchanan. He allowed the first two batters to get aboard, but then managed his way through the inning by allowing just one run as we go to the bottom of the floor.
plus Ford stores. Go further. Buy WB Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. Buy Budweiser. Here's to Budweiser. Here's to baseball. And buy Toyota. The Toyota Time sales event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. Well, David Buchanan works out of a jam. And the Dodgers half of the fourth. Now we go to the bottom of the fourth. It'll be Ruiz Hernandez and David Buchanan. Carlos walked his first time up and then was picked off second. Facing Dan Herring. Aaron delivers a breaking ball inside. One ball, no strikes. Two strikes to Carlos. Had a good at bat his last time up to work out that walk. Out toward left center field. Ethier's playing deep, so he's able to get there. Yeah, there's one gone. One away. Cesar Hernandez is coming up. Prior to the ball game, and this happens each and every Saturday here in 2014, the Phillies bring back a player who. Had an impact on this great ballpark. And they bring back Pedro Feliz to throw out the first pitch to Flash Gordon. Pedro can still throw it. And he is with Greg Murphy. Murph, take it away. Yeah, he could still throw it. He always could throw that baseball across the diamond for third base. Pedro, welcome back uh, to Citizens Bank Park. Good to see you. And uh, we were just talking before we came on the air. Uh, the memories of that that base hit that, that no one will soon forget in Philadelphia when Eric Brentland came running home in game number five. You're, do you think about that a lot? Yeah, you know, it's something that, you know, is, is going to be always in my mind. You know, it's, uh, it was a great moment, and I think it was maybe the biggest moment in baseball for me just to be in, in that situation and come through and uh, make it and, and get the winning RBI coming home. And, you know, I won't forget that one. <laughs> you know, it's so fun. You get out there on the mound today, and uh, you're throwing to Flash Gordon, and the crowd really responded when, when you were introduced. That's got to feel great after, after what, five years uh, being away? Yeah, no, that was, you know, it was a great moment, you know, just to see the crowd, you know, uh, being there and remember that, you know, it's uh, it something that, you know, refreshed my mind and think about in the, in the last five years in, in the past. And uh, it was a great moment and then just to see them, you know, support that. So it was good. As that ball was caught in the gap. Uh, tell me about what's going on with Pedro Feliz nowadays. I know you're still playing baseball right now. You played in the Dominican and you're thinking about going back and playing again. Yeah, I mean, um, I haven't stopped, you know. Um, uh, played a couple of years independent and been playing in Dominican, and um, I'm thinking going back this year if, you know, if they let me. So, so if they want me to go back, I will go back and uh, play some more. And, um, you know, I just, you know, enjoying the family so far. And um, I'm uh, coming up with a Chandra baseball bat uh, company down here in Philadelphia. So that's, you know, something that keeps me close to the game. Staying close to the game is uh, is terrific. Well, Pedro, good to see you. Welcome back to Citizens Bank Park. You know, Tom, Pedro's got a busy schedule because uh, right after he's done with this interview, he needs to go down and get with the Fanatic because you're going to be launching some hot dogs, are you not? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun, so I'm looking for that moment. <laughs> we'll see how he does with the launcher, guys. We'll send it back to you. All right, Murph, thank you very much. Buchanan lost one into shallow right center. D. Gordon makes the catch. And it's an easy fourth inning for Dan Heron. He's retired seven in a row. Pedro Feliz was one of the best defensive third basemen that you will find and here against Chad Bradford. He comes through with a base hit up the middle. Help the Phils to the 2008 World Championship as Eric Brutley crossed the plate. Well, he had a great arm in third.
Colorado Rockies. It's a Hatfield Dollar Dog Night here at Citizens Bank Park. A 505 first pitch and a salute to veterans on Memorial Day. Tuesday is 705, so it was Wednesday. You can purchase tickets by going to Phillies.com. We'll begin the fifth, and AJ Ellis takes ball one. It's one and zero. Oh. Ellis fly to right his first time up. Ellis and then Arabinea. Curveball, that's in there, one and two. Hasn't thrown a lot of curveballs today. No, he hasn't. And it's, uh, it's a very good pitch. He throws a first strike, and it just seems like he picks the, the right time when he wants to throw it and to get ahead in the, in the strike. Change up, popped up. Up the first baseline, Ryan Howard is in foul territory. One and On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, two of the best teams in the American League battle today. And the Toronto Blue Jays in first place in the American League East defeated the Athletics, who are in first place in the American League West. And you see what the Blue Jays have done. They've won 10 of 12. Now, this is the latest they've been in first place in the American League East in more than 10 years. Two and a half game lead. They just left Boston and they put a Pretty good beating on those guys going in and hitting for a lot of home runs and, and pitching walls uh, as well. So, well, we saw firsthand the talents there offensively. Just a matter of them getting some solid pitching and and believing. And Casey Jansen coming back as their closer has really helped their cause. 0 2 pitch to Arabinea. That he takes low, 1 and 2. Two pitches with one out here in the fifth. No problems at all with his pitch count at this point. Well, we've seen he's not afraid to throw the change up, and he threw the 2 2 change up there. Out towards center, Revere got a late start. I don't think he would have gotten that anyway. And that's the first major league hit for Reese Bell Arabinea. A one out single here in the fifth. So Lorenzo Bunday will toss that baseball toward the dugout. Just a pitch up in the zone, a little cutter. And probably the location he wanted down in the way, but. Left up in the zone and first big league knot for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Have you practiced it at all? Have you tried? Well, no, because he wasn't in the starting lineup. Dan Harrod squares and he whacks it over the mound. Rollins will have a play at first. Two outs, runner at second. D. Gordon's coming up. Let's take a look at our Mazda leaders and the Dodgers. Have a 118 and 80 record against non divisional the divisional opponents. And that's since 2012. The West has been tough. You know, the Giants have been a good team. The Rockies, during parts of seasons, have been good. San Diego goes into LA and they usually play well. The Gordon's 0 for 2. Off the end of the bat, 0 and 1.
Canada's pitching today for Cliff Lee. Cliff is on the disabled list with a sore elbow. This was uh, Cliff's day. And it was also Buchanan's day in the, uh, in the rotation. That in Lehigh Valley, so it fit perfectly for him. The 0 2 pitch to Gordon. A little dribbler up the first base line, and that rolls foul. Arabanea goes back to second. It's a good pitch selection there by Chooch because uh, Arabanea, the base hit the center field, was a high cutter. And the first two pitches to Gordon were up in the zone a little bit. Now he decided to come with a good change up, get him out in front and get him down the zone. Now look for that sinker inside. See if we get him with the uh, the front door sinker again. Carlos will creep to the outer edge and he throws him another changeup. And it remains 0 2. Now he may go with that front door sinker again. Let's see what name we can have you conquer for tomorrow. <laughs> That's the toughest one. You've got that uh, off the table. And a line drive toward left field, a base hit. Brown gets it on one hop. Arabinea runs well. The throw to the plate by Dominic Brown, not in time. And it's a 4 2 ball game. So an RBI and a base hit by Gordon. They'll give him a single. And he goes to second on the throw. So the lead is down to two. 13th RBI of the year for Gordon. Yeah, a couple of mistakes. That was an 0-2 uh, pitch. They got too much to play. Base at the left field, and and you got to realize who's running from second base. And, and even though he came up, made a strong throw to second base, that play has to go to second base to keep Gordon off from getting there and getting to a single. You're right. It was a strong throw. It sailed over the head of the cutoff man. And here's Turner. Turner. He's had two good swings against uh, David Buchanan so far. He grounded out his first time up during an eight pitch first inning. Then he doubled and scored his last time up in the fourth. In there for a strike, 0 and 1. Pickoff play is on its second. The ball goes sailing into center field. Gordon will go to third. And that'll be an E1. Rollins just couldn't reach around Gordon to grab that throw. Yeah, this is the, the daylight when as soon as you see him breaking towards second, but you can tell right there he had no chance of, of throwing him out, so maybe he should have probably just held it. But no balls at one strike to Turner. I am not sure where Turner thought that was. That looked like a really good pitch. And it was called a strike, rightfully so, and it's 0-2. Well, a lot of times you get a reaction from the bench is the way that you receive the, the pitch. Maybe he thought it was low. And he thought it was low. Well, I think every about 22 guys in the bench were hooping and hollering too. So uh, the 0-2 outside. Down the right field line, it's slicing foul. You can see how Puig is on deck.
Dodgers two runs on five hits the Phillies four runs on five hits. Swing and a miss he got him. He went upstairs. His family loved it. It was a changeup that was way up in the zone. It's his second strikeout of the afternoon. A run does score on the RBI by D. Gordon. But then he comes back to get Justin Turner on this pitch. It sailed up in the zone just a tad, but he got away with it. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth with plenty of reaction. And head west to battle Robbie Keane and the LA Galaxy Sunday night at 8 on Comcast Sportsnet. Last of the fifth inning. It's 4 2. The Phillies uh, are on top as we celebrate and remember on Memorial Day weekends 2014. Monday on Memorial Day, the Phillies are here at Citizens Bank Park. It's a 5 0 5 start. And one of the most important parts of that day will be the salute to veterans that will take place before the game. Ben Revere bunts foul. It's 0 and 1. Ben has had a good day offensively. He's, he's had a very good day. He's 2 for 2. He has an RBI and two runs scored. His average is a 279. He was disruptive his first two times up, which benefited David Buchanan because it, it gave the Phillies some runs. David Buchanan's lead is down to two, so he'd love to see Revere get on base again. That on base percentage is the leadoff hitter. That's one number that he really needs to get up. I'm sure this is the single up the middle, uh, staying through the middle and getting the, the big two out RBI. But the, the thing about Ben is his on base percentage is not going to be high unless he gets a lot of hits. Because he's not going to walk all that much. He's not. And, and as you can see, the, the lazy throw to first base. It, it's going to get all the way to third, even though Gordon's got a strong arm. Ben Revere safe at third. The home plate umpire signaled that there was no interference by Ben Revere to Dan Heron. Thank Madden was looking for some help at first base to to get the call. The interference. That's the home plate umpire's call. Now he's got to stay in the dirt area. He's off into the grass, but he does get back. I, I think he's in the baseline. I don't. I mean, he was off a little bit, but I do not think that he interfered with Heron. Although every pitcher will say that there was interference when there's an Aaron throw like that. Now the home plate umpire Buckminster can ask for help. I mean, that's what usually happens in a case like this. Don Mattingly is 
talking to him and you could see him signaling that he was in on the grass area. Watch it again. Yes, he's on the grass there. He's on the grass still there. Now he's going back toward the dirt. Heel still on the grass, still on the grass. Now on the dirt. We got a break. Yeah, I think looking at it again, I think you might be right on that one. And it is the discretion of the umpire to see whether he's in the line of sight. Uh, but he does need to stay in that dirt area. He did go up on the grass. And a lot of times that is called interference. We've seen it against the Phillies a lot of different times. But the Phillies get a break. So they're going to call it a base hit for Revere. He's three for three and then E1. And now at the infield back at Revere at third. Jimmy Rollins will be the batter. All right. Situation just like last night. Revere's at third, nobody out. He said that with nobody out, he's going on contact. But as Matt, you described in the open, which is the right way of describing it, and Ryan Sandberg agreed with you today. You go on contact if it's on the ground, if that's your, de your debate. Right. But if it's in the air at any point, Beyond the infield, you're stopping and you're going back to tag up. You're you're reading the ball off the bat. Anything in the ground, you're going on contact, of course. Line drives, you're freezing. Any ball that gets over the head of the outfielders is you're automatically going back to tag. Unless and as, and as Jimmy does, I'm sorry, Tom, a great job of putting the ball on play and manufacturing a run. Uh, but that's that's how you do it. And the only time you, you don't Go back and tag at third base. Is if you get jammed and it's a in between ball in between the shortstop or the infielder and the outfielder, that's where you have to try to reach. But to hear the explanation of what he said last night, and he was 100% wrong. No, this is a great job. It's a ball on the ground, and uh, in that situation, you want to get it, make sure it gets past the pitcher. Good read on Ben's part. Good job on, on Jimmy's part of, of getting the run in. Well, now Chase Utley's the batter. One out, one run in. Phillies capitalizing for the second time in this game on an error by the Dodgers. One ball and no strikes to Utley. Jake Deakman continues to throw in the bullpen for the Phillies. You wonder if Buchanan's done after five, even though he's got a very low pitch count. A lot of times, particularly when a youngster's making a major league debut on the mound, they worry about the adrenaline rush and sort of the adrenaline sort of calming down, and you're running out of gas way earlier than you normally would. Struck out. Five strikeouts for Heron. Speaking of Ben Heron, it's time for our full heart fact brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. Heron ranks among active pitchers with a 1.87 walks per nine innings and a 4.08 strikeout to walk ratio. His strikeout to walk ratio ranks third all time. In the live ball era. Part of the reason why he's won 134 games during his big league career. Well, I guess David Buchanan is done. Ryan Howard hits it into the shift. D. Gordon in shallow right. Throws him out. And the side is retired. But the Phillies do get a run. After an infield single by Ben Revere, he goes to third on an error by Harrod and scores on a ground out by Jimmy Rollins. We'll go to the sixth.
closing the door with confidence in 2014. After a bump of the road on the third day of the season, the last man out of the bullpen for the Phils has turned out the lights on opponents. Through the first two months, Papelbon has been in complete control. There were plenty of questions about the effectiveness of Jonathan's pitches entering this season. He has not only been effective, but efficient as well, closing games in one, two, three fashion. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, as expected, Pedro Feliz is uh, busy shooting some hot dogs with the Fanatic. I feel hot dogs. Yeah, a little trouble with a few of them. There's tinfoil busting all over the place. As we go to the top of the sixth inning, Pete McCannon shakes hands with David Buchanan. Buchanan's afternoon is done. After five innings, he'll have to sit and watch for the next four at least. Jake Diekman is the first one up out of the bullpen. He's two and two this year, 4.18 ERA. And Diekman is on to face Puig, Gonzalez, and Crawford. Well, we mentioned that Buchanan was up a little bit in the fifth inning. Maybe that's why they decided to take him out. You know, there's there is so much adrenaline when a young pitcher makes his major league debut on the mound that they're conservative. They, it's not Ryan, not only Ryan Sandberg, it's it's everybody in baseball. They just seem to be conservative, although his pitch count was really low. They decide to make a change and they go to Diekman, who can give them two innings if they need it. Yasiel Puig is one for two. Starts him off with a slider inside, one and oh. We could say what, what we saw from Buchanan today was pretty much what we saw in the five outings in spring training. No, and, and even though it was last inning, he was up in the zone. Uh, you know, he, he wasn't struggling. He wasn't. He didn't look tired. He still had good velocity. Uh, he was just up in the zone a little bit. Well, there are a couple of really close pitches that Jake Diekman did not get to Puig. His last two. Really, all three were close, but the last two in particular. And now it's 3 0 to Puig. Oh. Out to right field, Marlon Bird toward the track and has room. Oh, it's off his glove. And Puig is on his way around second to third. And he's going to get there standing. A misplay for Marlon Bird. He got there in plenty of time and it almost looked as if he. Well, he just flat out missed it. There's nothing else you could say. He just missed it. He does a nice job of getting back to the fence and actually he just didn't jump. The ball hit about six or seven inches above the glove and. I don't know if he realized that he was up against the fence or what it was, but he just never jumped for it. Well, they have scored that an E9. Adrian Gonzalez waves at the first pitch, and it's no balls and one strike. I think you're exactly right, Matt. I think he got back, thought it was. Thought he had it lined up and it was a few inches above his glove. A no doubt a playable ball. No balls, one strike. Swing and a miss, 0 oh and 2. No, and I agree, Tom. It's a, it's a very playable ball. And he, I mean, like I said, he just got back there and it was just a matter of he, he just had to jump a little bit to catch the ball. Still trying to figure out how they gave it an E9. 
when it hits the wall first. Yeah, I guess they felt like he should have caught it. Check his swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Ruiz looks the runner back to third and then fires to first. <laughs> you can't just lob it to first. You got to throw it. <laughs> One out here in the sixth. And that'll bring Carl Crawford to the play. Another lefty. You got Crawford a lefty, Ethier a lefty up. These next two batters. 5 2, Phillies lead it. They got an extra run in the bottom of the fifth inning. No strikes. Back toward the box. We off the bag a little bit. Deekman chases him back. Two outs. Reminder that the Phillies will wind down this homestand with five games against the New York Mets. Five games in five days. Thursday, the 29th, is when the series kicks off and wraps up on Monday, the 2nd of June. On Sunday, the 1st, a 135 first pitch, total Cliff Lee action figurine. Free defense, 14 and under. Tickets can be purchased at Phillies.com. All right, let's see if Deakman can get another left hander here. Andre Ethier is one for two. Ball gets away from Ruiz. Look out. Here comes Puig. He's going to score easily. And it's now a 5 3 ball game. You don't need to leave it uh, too wide for Puig to take an extra bag or come home on a play like that. Yeah, especially when he's very aggressive down the line. You can see how far he is right there. And the fastball that fastball slider that got away from Tooch and like you said you don't need a whole lot of uh, distance for Pui to score from third base. Well they've scored a pass ball to Ruiz. Fastball on the outside corner one ball one strike. Yeah Carlos just missed it. Yeah two seamer inside and you can get to turn the hand over. Two balls, one strike to Ethier. here. Balls, two strikes to Ethier. Ground ball, chopped back toward the bag. Rollins is there. Side is retired. An unearned run does score against Jake Diekman. So the lead for the Phils is back down to two. Middle of the six, five, three Phillies on top.
Honda. Visit your local Delaware Valley Honda dealer or shophonda.com. Buy McDonald's. Any size hot or iced coffee is just $1. McDonald's. I'm loving it. And buy AT&T. Mobilizing your world. Bottom of the six, Phillies five, Dodgers three. David Buchanan made his major league debut today, went five innings, and then gave way to Jake Diekman, who allowed an unearned run. Marlon Bird had a ball that hit the fence just above his glove on a Yasiel Puig fly ball. Puig then scored on a pass ball by Ruiz. Mike McConey, the uh, official scorer here today, who does a fantastic job, uh, just came back in to uh, review that play in right field. Uh, and he didn't realize the ball had hit the fence, the scoreboard. So I believe he's going to switch that to a triple. And it's still an, an unearned run because of the pass ball. So Puig does get a triple. Out of play, one ball, two strikes. Aaron now at 100 pitches. Up high, two balls and two strikes. Marlon doubled his first time up, struck out his last time. He's one for two. And he strikes out a second time. Six strikeouts now for Dan Heron. Fans, follow every Phillies game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and much more. Download on the App Store. Visit Phillies.com today. Dominic Brown is the batter with one out. And he takes a strike. It's no balls, one strike. Well, to a certain extent, Matt, what you said before about Dan Heron has come uh, to fruition. He was up in the zone. He is still slightly up, but not as much. And since the second inning, he has allowed one run, but he's also picked up five strikeouts. And that's why it's so important when you realize the starter is up in the zone early in the game. And that's when you need to get at him and put some crooked numbers up. Don't let him get settled in and keep the pressure on him. And they did it well the first couple of innings, and then all of a sudden they went up there and they started being aggressive in the strike zone again. And really, the second, the third and fourth inning, not a lot of uh, pitches. Yeah, the Phillies have just the one hit since the second. That was the ball that Revere tapped to the right of the plate that Heron picked up and threw into right field. He now has seven strikeouts. And Carlos Ruiz is coming up to the plate. Dominic Brown does not look comfortable at all after that swing. Uh oh, he's right. He grabbed his lower back. Side two balls and two strikes to Carlos.
What a catch. Wow. Forget the glove, just bring a beer bucket to the game. <laughs> I don't even know if he realized it went in or if he was trying to do that. Well, whatever it was, he's going to be having vendors all over the place trying to catch baseballs with their beer bucket. High fives for everybody. Watch this. It goes over the head of the little kid with the glove, and then bam! <laughs> Fly ball down the right field line. Puig on the run. And he makes the catch and the side is retired. Well, the other day it was cotton candy in Tampa Bay. And today it's the beer bucket here in Philadelphia. Phillies lead at 5 3 as we go to the seventh. Canada makes his major league debut here this afternoon in uh, five fairly efficient innings here, Matt. Yeah, he did, and he used all his pitches, his fastball, his cutter, his change, his curveball, and he was getting ground ball after ground ball early in the game. And it just seemed like in the fifth inning, he got up in the zone a little bit, but he kept the hitters off balance and, and, and pitching the outer half of that cutter and then burying the sinker inside right there to Gordon for his first major league strikeout. So he did a nice job of keeping hitters off balance and getting some weak ground balls at times. He gave way to Jake Diekman after five. That was a big one right there. The, the strikeout of Turner. That's the final batter that he faced with the changeup that was up in the zone. So as we take a look at our local Honda dealers game summary, you see the Phillies have a two run lead, five threes. We go to the top of the seventh inning. Chase Utley's two run home run started the scoring in the first. And Ben Revere has three hits, couple runs scored, and an RBI today for the Phillies. So now as we go to the top of the seventh, it'll be the bottom third. Ellis. Arabinea and then the pitcher spot a pinch hitter for Darren Heron I'm sure. AJ Ellis today is 0 for 2 he's fly to right he's popped out to first into foul territory. First pitch is outside. Let's check in with Greg Murphy Murph. Well, guys, I have chased a lot of beer vendors in my life, <laughs> but for different reasons. But I've just chased down Earl Cheney, who is with us. And uh, you just made probably the best catch of the afternoon. Uh, but you, you you told me you didn't mean to do it. No, I didn't mean to do it at all. I was trying to get out the way, and then I just, it was there. <laughs> you thank God for the beer tub, right? Or that might have hit you in the noggin. Yeah, and I didn't want I've already been hit once. I don't want to get again. Right, Earl's been uh, been working uh, for uh, the ballpark since 2004, since it opened. So you've been hit once, but that was your first catch. Is that your? How was that standing ovation you got? It was pretty good. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it, but it was pretty good. <laughs> well, guys. I had to give out a lot of high fives. <laughs> a lot of high fives for Earl, and uh, he's getting a, he's got to get celebrity status here in Section 110 right now. So, uh, well, congratulations. Uh, I, I'm keeping you from making some money, so I'm going to let you get back to work. All right, thanks a lot. <laughs> Guys, back to you. All right, Murph, thank you. Murph's always on the spot, right? Oh, that was great. There's ball four, and Ellis draws the leadoff walk here in the seventh. 
They're all back to work trying to make some more money. He's still he's still getting a round of applause as he goes down the, the stands. <laughs> Maybe that'll help him sell some more uh, some more brews. Arabinea got his first major league hit his last time up and then scored a run. Swing and a miss. Matt Kemp is out of the on deck circle for the Dodgers. No balls and two strikes. Mario Hollins, Mike Adams in the bullpen for the Phillies. Warming up in the Dodgers bullpen. We really saw him as a starting pitcher earlier this season in Los Angeles. Over to second, that might be two, although Arabinea runs well. Rollins has one and two in time. A 4 6 3 double play. And there are two outs. These lucky fans are this afternoon, Citizen Seven. They will receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal. And that's helping you bank better. Citizens Bank, good banking is good citizenship. Tony Gwynn in the the game in left field for Dominic Brown, who left with an apparent back injury. And now Matt Kemp has been introduced as a pinch hitter for the Dodgers. Kemp uh, has hit well at this ballpark. This year he's hitting 265. Pitches inside, one and zero. Kemp has been playing; he just hasn't started these first two games of the series. He's really battled some injuries the last uh, couple of years. It's five for twenty-two on this road trip for the Dodgers. One ball, one strike. Rounder to the third, and Hernandez rolls it across the diamond in time to retire the side. No runs, no hits, and nobody left. Time to stretch here in Philadelphia. The Phillies on top, five to three.
appreciate that. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh inning here at Citizens Bank Park. It's the Phillies five, the Dodgers three. Time now for the Dodge, or excuse me, the Jeep Stuff the Fans trivia quiz answer. All right, Matt, the question is, which two Dodgers won MVP awards in the 77 and 78 NLCS versus the Phillies? I got Steve Garvey. Steve Garvey is correct in 1978. So you got half a point. I'm uh, not sure the third one. Or the second one, sorry. Well, we're not asking you for three. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to think. You may have mentioned this person yesterday when you were debating your answer uh, to the trade of Larry Heisel. Dusty Baker. Johnny B. Baker. 1977. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of the Phillies prize pack. Cesar Hernandez leads it off against Paul Mahalam. Mahalam on in relief of Dan Heron. Heron goes six innings, five runs, two earned. He pitched well today. He closed well. One ball and one strike to Hernandez. Phillies have seen Paul Mahalam an awful lot during his career. Lofted towards second, caught by D. Gordon, one away. As promised earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. This photo coming from She Got Game 34. Where the uh, the Mother's Day hats that were given out here at Citizens Bank Park. So thank you, Jacqueline. We appreciate that. There are those hats brought to you by StubHub. Tweet your photo to hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. So Darren Ruff pinch hitting. Ruff 0 for 2 so far and his return to Philadelphia. Ground ball foul and it's one ball and one strike to him. Two and two to rough. And a call, strike three. Now Buckminster took an extra minute before he called that. It was close. And now two outs, top of the order. Ben Revere's coming up. He's three for three. No, it was close. You see, Ellis is set up inside, and he hits the spot. I mean, it was a very tough pitch, and it's what you call a pitcher's pitch. But in that situation, you got to try to guard the uh, two strikes and try to put the ball in play some way. Well, with Revere's three hits, his average has gone from 269 to 284. One ball and no strikes. Ben tried to bunt uh, earlier in the game a couple different times and one at bat and then decided to swing away. That's where he hit that ball just to the right. Of the mound, Dan Herring fielded it. Revere looked like he was on the grass. The throw went into right field or into foul territory down the right field line. And Revere wound up over at third. You know, I just thought it was interesting, Matt, on that play is that Buckminster didn't even ask for help yeah. from the first base umpire. To the right side and another base hit for Ben Revere. He's four for four. A double and three singles. D. Gordon was shaded toward the middle.
And if, if D. Gordon was played up the middle, and just get a fastball in her half, and just can swing the bat well and hit the ball from the hole at uh, second base. The reason why D. Gordon's been playing up the middle is that three of the last four balls that he has hit hard has been up the middle. So Rivera get out in front of it and rolled over through the hole, and now hopefully he can try to steal base very quickly. That was one of the other reasons why Ryan Sandberg said he put him back in the leadoff spot. He said, you know, Rollins does have good speed. He's stolen six bases, but he said Revere is really our our biggest stolen base threats. So by putting him in the leadoff spot, he said maybe I can get something going offensively for a team that struggled the last couple of days offensively. You know, and it makes sense. We, we we talked about when Jimmy was moved into the leadoff spot, and we like the move. And it, it's nice to know that you still have Jimmy Rollins who can hit one or two or basically anywhere in the lineup and do a tremendous job. But sometimes it's a wake-up call for players when you get bumped out of the number one area. You know that you haven't produced him. All right. Well, you found he was on the bench for a few days, which is brutal. You, you despise it as a player. His on-base percentage is not going to be very high because pitchers are going to throw him consistent fastballs to let him put it in play. And then it's up to him to put it in play in the right spots. Exactly. And, and what you would like to see is him see more pitches, get on base, create havoc on the base paths. But I'm telling you, his walk total is not going to be very high because the scouting report is fastball after fastball. Let him put the ball in play and get himself in. Well, and the other part too, uh, Ryan Sandberg said he, he wouldn't be able to do all this switching if it wasn't for this guy right here that's at the plate and how well he's adapted. First to the two hole, then back to the leadoff spot, and eventually to the two hole again. That ball's grounded toward third. Turner behind the bag slings it across the diamond in time to get Rollins, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit. And one man left seven in the books the Phillies hanging on to a two run lead as we go to the eighth. Nissan, get to your local Nissan store for the ride of your life. Plus bonus cash. Shop choose Nissan.com. Buy Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. And buy Chevrolet. Visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. Well, the Phillies are hosting a bark in the park. The Phillies wives uh, had a great event here today along with the SPCA. And the fanatic uh, was diving into it. In between innings, Mike Adams will take over as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Adams two and one at 2.77 ERA. 13 innings, 15 strikeouts. That is Adams warms up. 
It's time for the Major League Notebook. Murphy, uh, you got Earl with you, or are you just going to do it solo? <laughs> well, you know, he's busy working. He's got to make that last-minute money, so uh, I'm going to do it solo. And it's brought to you by Gwinnett Mercy University and the Orioles. They've gotten some catching help with Matt Wieters is on the shelf. They've traded for Nick Hunley from the Padres. The veteran was hitting 271 with a home run, three RBIs in 33 games with the Padres. Wieters is dealing with that sore elbow, and they're hoping that he won't need surgery. And Shane Victorino, guys, also hurting for the Boston Red Sox. He is back on the 15-day disabled list for the second time this season still dealing with that hamstring injury uh, of course uh, Shane Victorino helped them win a World Series a year ago but had trouble staying healthy so far this year uh, they've recalled Daniel Nava to uh, take his spot he'll be on the 15 day disabled list guys all right Murph thank you very much we appreciate that it's got to be frustrating you know after winning the world championship and you know, all the things the Red Sox have had to deal with this year and you know, for Shane Victorino he's going to deal with a lot yeah. and that's why it shows how hard it is to repeat Everything has to go perfect back to back years and a lot of injuries and everyone knows that Victorino's the legs are very important in his part of the game and maybe this time it'll, it'll be a point where he'll take a little extra time to get healthy so he can come back and, and finish the full season. One ball one strike to D Gordon Gordon today has a base hit in RBI is struck out looking and grounded to short. Phillies trying to win this one today for David P. Cannon in his major league debut. And a high fastball, and it's one and two. P. Cannon went the first five, allowed two runs, didn't walk anybody, struck out two. Then Jake Diekman. Diekman allowed an unearned run in two innings of work. Towards second, Chase Sutley to his left. And it's always good to keep D. Gordon off the base paths. Phillies have a couple of road trips that are open for fans to join in. The first one is in Pittsburgh, July 4th through the 7th, and then San Francisco, which is a great ballpark, and of course a great city. That's August 14th through the 18th. You can join the bowl, Greg Lazinski. And the Phillies Scott Palmer and, and others. Package includes game tickets, hotel accommodations, a brunch event with us broadcasters, plus custom Phillies vacations polo or pullover. Space is limited. For more info, go to Phillies.com slash road trips. Here's Turner. And it's a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. That'll be a road trip that I Get to drive to Pittsburgh to meet you guys there. I thought you were going to say you're going to drive to San Francisco. You're nutty enough to do that. <laughs> no, uh, actually, I'll be meeting you guys in Pittsburgh, and I am on that trip to San Francisco. All right. I might drive home because I have a few days off afterwards. That one's popped up out of play, and it's 0 2. Pittsburgh is not a bad drive out the Pennsylvania Turnpike. San Francisco. That has to be a bad drive. <laughs> Wouldn't bother me a bit. Why don't you do it and just tell us what it's like? <laughs> Those are two great cities, two great ballparks. Uh, that's one thing that really stands out. PNC and ATT Park, two of the better new parks in all of baseball. And being out in Pittsburgh July 4th uh, the holiday they have great firework shows at PNC Park. One ball two strikes to Turner. And a called strike three. Well, tomorrow Hall Fair Mike Schmidt will join us here in the booth as the Phillies face the Dodgers Sunday with Schmidt. Tomorrow 1 30 right here on Comcast Sportsnet. We'll get Mike's impressions of Yasiel Puig. Puig is tripled. He's also singled and is grounded to short. He has five hits in the series, five for eight so far. Or five for six so far, excuse me. That one will spin foul.
He is a large human being. in less than a year he's that guy on the other team that fans you know will boo because he's so good and when a pitch like that is a little closer than some others and he spins out of the way he'll cheer a little bit doesn't seem like it phases him even <laughs> one one bit over to third Hernandez it's probably the slowest we've seen him run up the first baseline this entire series. It's a one, two, three, eight hitting for Mike Adams. Chase Utley is due to lead things off for the Phillies as we go to the bottom of the eighth here in Philadelphia. All fans coming to the ballpark will receive the Chase Utley bobble figurine. It's compliments of Pico. It's a great giveaway. It's an outstanding figurine. You can order your tickets by going to phillies.com. Last few years, the Phillies, when they've given out these uh, these bobbleheads, um, they've added a little different twist to them. You know, whether it be the Ruiz one where the face mask comes off or the Chase one with the sunglasses on. Chase takes a strike as we start the bottom of the eighth. Or the dirt on the pant leg. Or the dirt on the, on the pant leg. Yeah, the fact that he's uh, down with his knee to block the plate yeah. or block the base too. Chase fouls that one at the plate. Chase homered his first time up. He's one for three. Not received a report yet on Dominic Brown. Let's hope he's okay. Dominic left the ball game uh, earlier after striking out. He grabbed his lower back. Swing and a miss. Nutley struck out for the second time this afternoon. And one out for Ryan Howard. Chris Perez warming in the bullpen. He's probably warming up for Marlon Bird. 
particularly if Ryan Howard gets on. Meanwhile, Jonathan Papelbon is loosening up in the bullpen for the Phillies. No balls and one strike to Howard. Gone over 40 at bats since his last home run. Shallow right again for D. Gordon. It's second time today. Howard's been retired that route. There were two outs. Marlon Bird's coming up. Don Mattingly looks like he's going to keep Mahalam in there. I think that was the case. I think Perez was just warming up in case Howard got off. I agree with Tom. I was, sorry, I was watching Howard walk back and he, he's walking with, you can tell he's frustrated. He's getting some pitches to hit, and he's either swinging and fouling them back, or swinging, missing, or or rolling over to second base. And well, the advice you give him is you got to keep your head up and keep battling. Yeah, last night you pointed out it. Last night he he was aggressive against Kershaw, and he was on some pitches, but he just kept fouling them off. Kershaw just kept throwing one fastball after another at him. Right. With two to Marlon Bird. And that pitch hit him, and Bird will go to first. We'll take that hit by pitch any day of the week. <laughs> no balls, two strikes. Getting hit by a pitch. Hitting in that pad. Just perfect execution of getting on base. <laughs> Mahal was saying something to him, too, as he's going off the first base line. Oh, base runner for the Phillies with two outs here in the eighth. It's Tony Gwynn who came on to play left field for Dominic Brown after Brown went uh, out with an apparent injury. That's a ball nice on Paul Mahalan. It's a good call. Well, Brian Knight called it immediately. And usually what the, the the umpires are looking at the situation is the 45 degree angle, but his foot crosses past his knee, and that's why automatically they call it a block right away. The Hollow disagreed. In fact, he was shaken off. Brian Knight, the first base umpire, after the explanation. It was the same explanation you just gave. Owen one to Gwynn. Up the first base side. It's a fair ball as it rolls right into the glove of Adrian Gonzalez. And the side is retired. No runs, no hits, and one man left. We've played eight. We go to the ninth inning. Gonzalez will lead it off against Jonathan Papelbon.
on the mound. We go to the top half of the ninth inning. That is Pap fires away on the hill. It's time now for a Hyundai defensive play of the game. Matt, no beers were damaged on this play. No, and this is just a tremendous concentration by Earl in the stands with a very nice catch, no panic. And as you can see, he has two hands, so Jamie would be extremely happy. And he is given high fives everywhere. And it's I'm amazed how quick Murph found him over in that area. That's right. And that is brought to you, your defensive game, uh, play of the game, brought to you by Hyundai. Earl's been hit by one ball in his career as a vendor here, and now he's caught one. <laughs> so Papabon in his 19th ball game, 12 saves. 14 strikeouts in 17 and a third. Going after his 80th career save in a Phillies uniform. Not only that, he's trying to pick up career save number 299. Well, he's been good for the Phillies. He did allow a run his last time out against the Marlins, but his velocity was good. His command was was still good in that ball game. Now Adrian Gonzalez will lead it off. He's 0 for 3. He's grounded out twice and he's struck out. First pitch is fouled away. It's 0 and 1. So he's been up and down, up and down with their win loss record over the last uh, 10 days or so. And because of that, Papabon hasn't really worked a whole lot. So his arm should be fresh. Balls one strike to Gonzalez. That one's pulled to right. Marlon Bird is there. One away. Papabon is looking for his 13th save of the season. Tied for seventh in the National League with 12. He's trying to save this for David Buchanan, who is looking to pick up his first major league win. Carl Crawford is the batter. Crawford 0 for 3. Has an RBI and a ground out. Late on a 91 mile an hour fastball. It's 0 and 1. Really surprised to see the, the Adrian Gonzalez and Crawford going up there and, and and jumping all over that first pitch. Usually down by two, you need base runners, and I guess they just have the confidence of going up there and letting them hack. First, Ryan Howard will smother it, and there are two outs. So two away, Andre Ethier's coming up. The Phillies are one out away from securing David Buchanan's first major league win and his first major league start. Buchanan allowed two earned runs over five innings, didn't walk a batter, struck out two. Uh, the veteran Jonathan Papelbon is trying to seal the deal for him. He's got Andre Ethier at the plate. Ethier takes a strike, it's 0 1. Much of the 32,287 on hand today. Starting to get into this final op opportunity to get it out. There are 15 folks from just outside Atlanta that are here that are certainly are holding their breath. The 0-1. Check swing. One ball and one strike. Just heard a report that Dominic Brown left with mid-back spasms. Now field is deep. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss, one and two. Now everybody's coming to their feet. A little nervous energy for the folks from Peachtree City, Georgia. They've made it here to watch 25-year-old right-hander David Buchanan in his Major League debut. And now the one-two pitch from Papelbon. 
Fly ball out toward left. Gwynn will take it on a hop. And a base runner for the Dodgers, and A.J. Ellis is coming up. Following this ball game, Ricky Vitalico will be here to talk about David Buchanan's performance in his major league debut. Only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. All right, so everybody sits back down and gets ready to try to do it again. Ellis is 0 for 2. He walked his last time up. Ethier being held on by Howard. Q shot foul 0 and 1. Mark Papp is throwing strikes. Well, he is. He's hitting the spot. And I'm really surprised that Ryan Howard would be holding Ethier on a first base since his run doesn't mean nothing. I'd like to see him play off, play it back a little bit. No doubles. Pitch coming to AJ Ellis. Up and in, two and one. The ball got on him pretty quickly. So two balls and one strike. Papelbon and Ruiz chatting at the foot of the mound. It seemed like he dropped down a little bit, his angle wise, and just a fastball that got away from him. And little chin music. Old school baseball right there. <laughs> Crowd will come back to their feet one more time. It's two balls and two strikes to AJ Ellis. <laughs> Howard now plays behind Ethier at first. Papelbon has his signs. Now the 2 2 pitch. Outside, Ethier takes off. He'll get the second uncontested. And Slyke is on deck as a pinch hitter. Three balls, two strikes. Foul and we'll do it again. That slike is going to hit for Arab Arena if we get to that point. And Pat's hoping we don't get to that point. Luis tapping his chest, tapping his face mask, now laying down some signs. And the 3 2 pitch inside ball four. And they're going to put two on with two men down. That's Scott Van Slyke will pinch hit for the Dodgers. And Slyke is three for ten on this road trip. A lot of his success has come against lefties. 314 against left handers, 182 against righties. He's hitting over 300 as a pinch hitter, though. The tying run is over at first in a two run game. It's 5 3. And Papelbon is set to go in the pitch. Fastball in there for strike 0 and 1. Papp was able to get the first two batters very easily. And then a single by Ethier. And the walk to Van Slyke.
And that's caused a little tension here in the ninth. 0 oh and 2. He went fishing right there. A little high fastball. Now I'll see if uh, Palmer Bond can either snap a, a real nice slider off or a nice fork ball or that would be another fastball to, to chase the, the no ball one strike. Crowd back to their feet. They've done it several times. The runners lead off and the 0-2 pitch in the dirt. One ball and two strikes. Leads off second. AJ Ellis leads off first. Neither runner being held on. Here comes the one-two pitch. Drag and a miss. He got him with a breaking ball. And Jonathan Papelbon has saved David Buchanan's first big league victory. And for Pap, it's career save number 299 as the Phillies win it five to three here this afternoon. Hugs all the way around. High fives for Peachtree City, Georgia. And David Buchanan has picked up his first major league win. Our player of the game is Ben Revere, brought to you by Chevy. Four for four, a double at RBI and three runs scored. If not for Ben's offense today, well, then David Buchanan would not be in line for his first big league victory. Well, here's our WBC delivery of the game. It started early, and this is part of the offensive day for the Phils. Yes, was this is coming after an AJ Ellis air where we couldn't catch the, the foul ball and Chase gets a fastball down and in and drives it out of the ballpark for a blast in the first inning. Now the Phillies were front running from that standpoint. They jumped out to a 4 0 lead, then it was 4 2 and 5 2, finally 5 3. And the bullpen was able to secure things for Buchanan. First it was Jake Diekman, two innings and one run. Then it was Mike Adams, and then finally Jonathan Papelbon. Boy, this was a fantastic pitch by Papelbon. And the reaction from David Buchanan's family and friends, yes, sir. I reckon we're going to get ourselves our first major league win, and that's exactly what happens. So David Buchanan is the first Phillies pitcher to get a win in his debut since Diekman did it in May of 2012 against the Astros. And the last Philly starter to get a victory was Antonio Bastardo. That night in San Diego, he threw one fastball after another, and he got the victory back in June of 2009. Well, this was a good day. We kind of anticipated David Buchanan getting an opportunity to pitch at Philadelphia this year, and he waited and was congratulated by all his teammates. And his day today, well, it was aggressive from the get-go. Four straight ground ball outs. Yeah, it was. And he, he, he threw a lot of strikes. He pounded the strike zone early in the game. He made some quality pitches, keeping the hitters off balance with his cutter, mixed in some curveballs, and had a very nice changeup early in the game. Well, this is getting Yasiel Puig. It's always good to get Puig on a ground ball in the first inning. And then this backdoor two-seamer, or front door two-seamer, D. Gordon. And then with a little bit of trouble facing him, he's able to get Adrian Gonzalez on the tapper back. And then Justin Turner to go up on a changeup. And all that is part of his Major League debut. And now he gets to cap it off. Well, probably cap it off with some dinner. But he gets to cap yeah. off this game with Greg Murphy. Murph? Yeah, he does. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations, David. Uh, it was. Uh, I, I imagine this is a moment you've thought about for a long, long time. How did it compare to uh, the thoughts about the, as you grew up and, and, and dreamt about this moment? Um... It's kind of hard to say, you know, it's kind of hard to put into words. That's something you dream about since I was, you know, two years old, you know, and obviously it was just a dream being a little kid. But as I got older, it became more and more real to, to do it and um, get this opportunity today. I'm, I just feel so blessed and humbled to have this opportunity to do it at home in front of our, our fans and my family was able to come watch you play. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless, man. I, I feel so blessed right now. It's, it's, it's a great time. Talk about your family. We got a chance to start this game by talking to your mom and dad and uh, and the rest of the family because they're, they're all up there. It, it has to be great that uh, you can share this moment with them. Oh, absolutely. That means the whole world. You know, I, w 
I wasn't able to like let them put anything on the internet like before it was released. But uh, when Bernie told me, I was allowed to you know let them know on the phone. So I called them. They all freaked out. You know, that we're all over on the motion, and uh, they, they did so much effort to get here. I know um, it wasn't easy. They all got work. There are things going on at home, but uh, they put aside their schedule to come support me and be here with me in this moment. So, uh, like I said, I'm just blessed to have a family that loves me that much. And for everybody to come out, friends, everything, uh, it's, it's just an honor, man. When did it hit you that uh, as you were up there on the mound that guys like Chase Utley and Jimmy Rollins and Ryan Howard and those guys are behind you, uh, playing defense behind you and, and uh, trying to help you get your first major league win? Uh, I think that, that, that there was one play, uh, uh, I think Heron hit a ball in the middle, and um, I did a little, like, thing trying to hit the back of my hand. And uh, Jerry will come and he goes, hey, don't do that. <laughs> and I was like, okay, he goes, I got it. I was like, all right, you know, so it's, I told him, I was like, you know, and, and this is instant to go for the ball. He goes, look, hit hard, don't do it because you're on the mound. But if it's soft, don't do it because you might me mess up my play. I'll get it. And I was like, all right, you know. And then uh, Chase came up to me uh, that end where uh, Gore was on second base. And he's like, look, man, don't worry about him. Get this guy to play. So just veteran things like that just kind of calm me down, you know, not let it speed up on me. Just kind of keep me in, in the game was huge, so it was, it was a good time. Well, congratulations on that first major league win. I know you got a lot of celebrating to do, and I know your family's right up there, uh, and they were all jumping up and down, pretty excited as well. So, congratulations, Dave. We'll send it back upstairs. All right, Murph. Thank you very much. There's his dad, Andy, who got a chance, along with a bunch of family and friends, to enjoy the first major league victory for David Buchanan. Get a chance to say hello to some of the Phillies fans, and why not sign some autographs? before he goes back into the clubhouse to enjoy it with his teammates. A reaction felt all around the ballpark and even outside of Georgia this afternoon as the Phillies have defeated the Dodgers 5-3. We'll be back after this.